You're listening to Sarah Hagen Backstage, with interviews and insights from years inside the music industry. Join Sarah as she talks with masters of their crafts, finding out what makes them tick, both inside and outside of the music business. Welcome to Sarah Hagen Backstage. My guest today, J.D. Beck, is a young drummer, singer, composer who is having one of the best years ever. We are going to talk about his new album, Not Tight, the amazing guest artists on that album, his association with Anderson Pack, their Tiny Desk concert series, and his and Domi's Grammy nominations for Best Contemporary Instrumental Album and Best New Artist. So come along with me as I catch up with J.D. Beck. J.D., welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you for being here. It's awesome to see you. It has been a long time since I've actually seen you. And yeah, um, I know. How's it going? It's good. It's good. I, I think the last time we were together in person was right before the world fell apart, right? Yeah. Like 2020, January 2020 for yeah, Zildjian January. Live recording. Yep. That was a different time. It was a whole different time, like a whole mm-hmm. lifetime ago, basically. Yeah, it feels like it. It's kind of it's, weird. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. But that was an amazing time. I mean, the Zildjian Live recordings were epic. I don't yeah. know. If <laughs> that's I the word that comes to mind. He that many other people recording. I think I saw Marcus Gilmore like a little bit, but I, I think I didn't start filming mine until, or no, we didn't start rehearsing mine until super late, and so that's why I was tired the next day. I think. Yes, I, you, you're right. I was just talking about that with someone because I think you started rehearsals at like two a.m. the night before. Yeah, yeah, they it was crazy, <laughs> and you were like such a trooper. You oh. and Domi were such troopers, like just being there so le- well early in the morning and then coming yeah. back. Well, I mean, um, we had no choice. <laughs> it, was like, it. <laughs> it was like either we're gonna fuck this up or we just wait. So we waited. <laughs> but you, but it was so so good. And um, oh. I know that video has like almost three million views. I think on YouTube, right? Yeah, no, it's like Zildjian's like third most watched video or something, which yeah. I'm very embarrassed by. I, uh, yeah, I hate the way I sound on that, but it's cool. <laughs> you were, you were saying that. I think like we're all our own worst critics, but like, yeah, I think, think I just, I, I came up with like a lot, I don't know, more vocabulary for myself and things that I like wanted to, I don't know, channel, you, you know, I, I guess <laughs> that was like, that was like a kind of a transitional period for me I guess you could say because I was I don't know I I wanted to play really fast and I wanted to play like a lot of shit that I was you know coming up with or you know stealing (laughs) from every (laughs) drummer before me you know things things that I just heard that I wanted to do but I didn't really know how to I don't know execute it correctly Mm -hmm. and so I think watching that video I'm just I can't hear what I actually played I can only hear what I should have played which is like yeah, that's... I understand completely what you're saying. And I think like any musician listening understands exactly what yeah. you're saying. But but, you know, that I I know how many people saw that video and were just like, this is incredible. So you have Thank nothing. You. Yeah, nothing to feel negative about. But I totally understand <laughs> what you're saying, because you're you know, you've over the past it's been almost three years which is yeah. crazy but mm-hmm. you've um you've changed in your technique and you have a whole like you said a whole new vocabulary now so like yeah I mean that also like I guess a lot of people don't think about it I was I just turned or no I was about to turn 17 I was 16 you know and yeah. I think like I think it's it's weird to have so much stuff of me you know on the internet from like starting when I was 14. I mean, there's stuff when I was younger, but especially 14, because that's when I started playing with Domi and mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. It just sucks. It sucks to have <laughs> all of that on the internet. And that's what people watch. Cause you know, like every, every few months I'm like, Oh wait, I want to sound like this. And yes. Well, cause you're, yeah, you're growing. It's such a like formative time in your life and in your musical history, like, and you change and you grow so much in that time. And I mean, I feel lucky that I grew up in a time where 
nothing was captured on yeah. On that's phones, crazy. everywhere you went or on video. Um, mm -hmm. But that's a really, really good point because you were 16 years old. I remember calling you um, to ask if you wanted to do it. And yeah. I think I said to you, like, um, should we, like, talk to your parents? Like, oh, I don't. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> right. And you that's were like, oh, yeah. Me. It was just like a, I've kind of been my own manager for a long time until I got an actual manager. But. Right. Yeah, I, don't know. I, I used to have to gig a lot by myself. Like my parents were, they always knew what I was doing and they would, you know, drop me off if I needed a ride somewhere and stuff like that. But I, they pretty much just let me, I don't know, take care of things myself ever since I was like 11, really, when I wow. started. Gigging, really. Yeah. And that's what you said to me on the phone. You're like, oh, yeah, I do everything myself and I travel. And I and I was just like, oh, my goodness, this is this, <laughs> this is amazing. Um, I mean, it seems like you had a lot of um, encouragement at a super young age. And then yeah. like but for your parents to let you like know you knew what you wanted and what you were doing and to let you do it. That's that's mm -hmm. pretty incredible, too. Yeah, I guess they just I mean, I'm the youngest of seven. Wow. So. So I think they just kind of were like, yeah, whatever happened. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess it worked for the most part. So Yeah, it seems it seems to have worked. You've had like the most incredible year just from looking from the outside. You've had like a, an epic, let's use that word again because it it fits, but like Thank the you. the your past year has been amazing and you know, coming out with with your album, let's talk about the album, Not Tight, because, um, you know, I'm a huge fan of you and Domi anyway, and have always been since I met you. But um, hearing that album and just like, <clears throat> excuse me, the mm -hmm. the growth that, like you were saying earlier that you've had and, you know, just um, the, everything put together so well. It was amazing. Oh, thank you. I mean... That album, it's funny because most of the songs, or at least like the compositions themselves, we wrote together in like 2018, like very end of 2018 and most of 2019. Mm -hmm. so that, that whole time was when we were really like writing most of the stuff that's on the record. But because we we ended up getting delayed so much because we had so much legal shit when we were trying to put our record out and we had like five different labels trying to sign us and we really didn't know what to do for so long because that was I don't know that was a scary ass decision luckily we we made the right one with Anderson and um yeah we ended up having enough time to like re-record things and flesh it out so that was all of 2021 was like us just I don't know coming back up with like figuring out I don't know like I was saying coming up with new ways to play mm -hmm. the things I was already hearing but just right. know, better to me, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> that that is amazing. I didn't know that you were being like courted. I mean, it makes sense, but yeah. by those labels, and I'm sure that was a tough decision. Yeah, um, that was that was all of 2020 because we had most of, we had like a version of the whole album out. Uh, we had it, I think, finished like our our own first version in like beginning of the summer of 2020 I think and I don't know it was we were really proud of it and we were you know ready to send it out to the earth but then we had like labels contact us and we had I don't know a lot of opportunities and different ways we could go about releasing it and um yeah so that that made it really difficult and also because I wasn't 18 yet it right. made uh yeah it made signing a, a really difficult thing we had a to get a lawyer i never thought i would get a lawyer at 7 <laughs> and i have a lawyer now and <laughs> that's good that's a really good thing to have someone looking out yeah, for your interests I, legally like that's that's a good step for sure yeah it's still expensive but it's yes, worth it. it's worth it yeah, <laughs> yeah because i always think about lawyers you know it'll cost you more down the line Mm, to not Fixing have one. problems right yeah totally totally and that I, I think that was the thing we we understood but that also the problem was is we started posting that we had this album and like even before we finished the record we were telling people like oh yeah it's coming out because to us we were like okay when we finish it we're gonna press upload and it's good right. and then 
then all that shit happened in 2020 and then it delayed it even more and then 2021 happened and it was still covid and we were just like fuck all right let's now we have so much other stuff to do because we didn't even think about mixing or mastering or <laughs> i don't know like album cover shoot like all these other things like we knew what what the finished product what we wanted it to be like mm -hmm. but we i don't know we didn't we didn't realize how much it took and so that was all of 2021 and so everybody was mad at us for three years because they thought our album oh, no. <laughs> they were all waiting right for the album yeah, but exactly but it was it was worth the wait i'm sure everyone feels the same way about that because um yet the, it's so so great and the the other musicians that you have um featured in the music is is really great too um you know, hearing Snoop Dogg on on the track pilot, that was it's oh, okay. super cool stuff. Oh, um, how did that all come about? Like, did you write the songs first and then they put their parts down or? Um, I guess the for the Snoop and, and Busta song, that was kind of like Andy's contrib Anderson, his contribution to the record, because that was like a, a, a beat we made a long time ago. And we sent it to him for him to write to just to right. do whatever he wanted with. And we didn't even think of it as something to put on our record. And um, yeah, he just sent it back with Busta Rhymes on it. And we were like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> and uh, so we had that song for a long time and with Busta. And we just didn't know what it, it was going to be. And when we were when we were working on the record, we the fir I think the first person we ever recorded was Thundercat, but that's basically because we live with him for the <laughs> most part in L.A. and um, and he uh, yeah so we had we have like a lot of songs with Steven. We all we always write together and mm -hmm. I don't know, just fuck around and so that 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 was natural and then we had. Um, then we had a few other songs written and we we were kind of starting to put it together and that's when we got Mac DeMarco. We we went to his house because we always go to his studio. He has like a crazy studio in his backyard, like a, a garage. He like there's probably there's probably like three million dollars worth of equipment in there. Probably wow. <laughs> like just all recording stuff. And he yeah. has it set perfectly and he knows he can press one button and it's like the greatest sounding recordings ever. So me and Domi and a lot of our friends, we we um we go hang out with Mac and we record there and mess around and I don't know, hang out. And so we we had this instrumental for the the song Two Shrimps, and um <laughs> we played it for Mac and he he started like, ooh, yeah, I like this. And he slowed it down on his tape machine. And he started singing a song about sandwiches. And he called it Sandwiches of America. <laughs> he was lifting off like every sandwich. And it was cool. And it, there was actually some melodic value to it. And we were like, OK. And he was like, are you guys going to use that? And I was like, no, <laughs> of course not. Like, can you write a real song to it? And he was like, yeah, yeah, sure. And so another time we, we went over there and he had lyrics written and he had, um, I don't know, kind of the idea. And we helped him a little bit with the placement because he's never done a song in like odd time before. And that song's mm -hmm. a nine, which is really hard, especially for, I don't know, to sing over because we're, I don't know, subdividing a lot of weird shit. And um, yeah. And yeah, and so that, that came about. So we had Thundercat and Mac and... Um, Damn, who else on that? Oh yeah, Kurt. That was another thing we recorded in our bedroom, actually. Like this little bedroom we converted into a, a studio at my wow. parents. And we uh we just called it the room. <laughs> and that's uh it was like the worst recording equipment ever. There was no soundproofing. This is my drums, Domi's MIDI keyboard, like a TV, a couch, and like two PCs like computers to play wow. games on and record and shit. Yeah. And yeah, it was it was fucking a nightmare in there. And uh <laughs> um I forgot how we thought of Kurt, but it it was like a, a little melody Domi wrote when she was like 12. And we started putting it together and we recorded this whole thing and 
I guess it was empty enough. Yeah, it was it was empty enough for us to be like, okay, this needs like somebody. And we're obsessed with Kurt Rosenwinkel. He's like a god on guitar, and he just has yeah. like, he has such a unique tone and sound. And like you you hear him play on a record, and you know it's him. And yes. And so we were like, all right, let's send it to him. And I guess uh, yeah, he lives in Berlin too. So we we never. We're there for that recording, but he sent us back the whole song, and he was um, <laughs> he was soloing from the second the song started to the very end. He actually added time at the end of it to finish the phrase, and so yeah, and that was that was basically the album we had in 2020 was like those four tracks and like some other I don't know little I guess you could call. Um, what would you even call I, I don't know what you would call it because they weren't songs and they weren't beats, but they were short and they were us playing a lot. <laughs> so I guess okay. you could call it mini songs. And that was there all filled on this this one record. And um, yeah, then all the lawyer shit happened. And then in 2021, we were like, OK, we have this song pilot with Busta. Let's get Snoop on it because Andy's really close with Snoop and Snoop was down and he heard it and he loved it. And so we got that together and then. I guess the the last. Am I forgetting anybody? Uh oh, Herbie Hancock. Right? Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> Jesus! Um, <laughs> I don't know how I forgot that. Wow. Yeah, actually, that was in twenty twenty one. We um, when we were finishing the record, Anderson asked us. Um, he asked us how how we uh, how we felt about the whole record and what we think it it needed and if we needed anybody else and we were like shit herbie hancock and he, was like, he was like huh i wonder who knows herbie that we know we're like well we know a bunch of people that know herbie but we're not gonna like start texting people hey what's herbie's number right talk to herbie you know and we just got so lucky because a few months later andy was like i i brought up the the herbie thing to my manager and he said that Herbie was watching y'all on YouTube and he's down to to do a song. And we were like, oh, shit, Herbie has been watching us on YouTube. Wow. And yeah, that was like the scariest feeling ever. And so so they talked and Herbie was like, yeah, just send me the song. L let me let me hear it or whatever. And we we're like, OK. And so I think it was like a week and a half of like 10 hours straight every day. We were just like trying to write a song for Herbie, which was that was the most stressful thing in the world. Yeah, I bet it was. <laughs> yeah. And I guess uh, that came pretty easy, though, because like two weeks later, he um, we met at the studio and he brought his whole grand piano and his vocoder and stuff. And he he did everything in like one take. It was, wow. It was insane. And uh, That's amazing. So yeah, that was 2021. And then 2022, that's when we did album cover and we did fucking... Um, music videos stuff and uh yeah and then we finally got to release it that's all aw that's awesome and the music videos the music <laughs> videos were super cool too because it's like you know i grew up in the mtv time where mm -hmm. like every single had a music video mm -hmm. associated with it and it's like not as common anymore and mm -hmm. you know so like seeing you guys come right out with not only like videos for the songs but like concept videos and you know yeah. ba basically like mini movies Thank um, you. super super cool i absolutely love that and i also loved like seeing all your friends in the videos too because that's yeah that that's was fun. that was like a we've i don't know we've kind of been obsessed with you know movies and film and i don't know like real cinema you know whatever i guess whatever you could call it and uh I, I like music videos, but music videos nowadays are very um, kind of you can just tell how corporate they are or how, um, I don't know, how everything is subliminal and it's all just to make money or to get people to, I don't know, buy shit or uh, mm -hmm. kind of follow trends. Everything It's just weird. Everything's really kind of scarily connected, right? Sure in a way that's like this doesn't seem right this shouldn't this doesn't Very seem like actually art it seems like they're trying to do something and i think yeah. for us we were i don't know we just had 
we had the opportunity to do like little movies, you know, because we had a budget from our label. They were like, all right, we can do music videos. We can do this. And one of me and Domi's uh, super close friends, um, Tahila De Castro, she's an amazing cinematographer. And uh, so she pretty much helped us do all of that. And the, and the first video, Smile, was kind of like um, Andy kind of wrote that that whole uh, treatment and the script or whatever you could call it. And mm -hmm. uh, he put that whole idea together. We sat with T and we got the that whole thing together. And then when Take a Chance came came about, me and Domi were like, shit, we should write something ourselves. And so we wrote that one. And that one was, <laughs> we ended up writing it. Um, it, it was just too complex. So we had to like cut it down like a lot. And we it was, it was gonna be so expensive because Smile, was filmed on on real film 16 mm -hmm. millimeter and we, oh, okay. wanted to, we wanted to do that on the on the next one or we well we wanted to do 35 millimeter which is also insanely expensive mm -hmm. but um yeah we just we didn't have the budget for the amount of shit we were trying to do and we only had one day to shoot it because if you shoot it a second day it's going to be like so much money to pay mm -hmm. for all this other shit music videos are insane i really next album if we have the opportunity to do it again that's great but i feel like we're gonna spend a lot of time finding finding ways to do it ourselves sure okay, but also you know where we don't have to pay anybody else to do it <laughs> yeah you? it does all that stuff gets expensive and it's all like a lot of expenses you don't even think about at the yeah, time right? that's the problem it's it's all the it's like crew and it's like I don't know shit I never thought about, but yeah, I guess we got, we got to make two little little mini movies, and it it worked out. I think. Yeah, I they're super cool. And and on that song, take a chance. Mm -hmm. um, hearing you sing, I've never heard you <laughs> sing before. Thank you. Yeah, it was super super good, and I didn't know before I listened to the song for the first time, and I was like, wait a minute, I think you do singing, and yeah. it's it's great. You guys yeah. like that. Yeah, absolutely. That was um that was um I wrote the the chorus for that song, the, the the part that I'm singing on like I wrote it like a year and a half before we even um tried to work on the song cuz it, it was all I had was the melody and like some chords on the piano. It was really simple, but it was stuck in my head like crazy for a year and a half too. And I was like, "All right, we have to do something for this." And then when we were talking with Anderson and we were like damn, we really need you to, I don't know, do something on a song, you know, that's not just like a little, you know, hook, we need to give you like a full song. And I don't know, we, we came up with that part in seven, and it just kind of all came together super easily. And um, I tried to get Anderson to sing the the hook. And I, I was like sending him voice memos of how to do it, because he wrote all the lyrics. Mm -hmm. This girl, uh, Taylor Parks. And um, yeah, I kept sending him voice memos like, no, do it like this, do it like this. And he was like, no, nah, fuck it. You just need to sing it. And so I was like, okay, whatever. Awesome. And Domi's, Domi's been um, like obsessed with writing like vocal harmonies for people and stuff. Like she, she helped Anderson write a bunch of vocal harmonies and stacks for like the new No Worries album that's coming mm -hmm. out. And uh yeah, so that just came. Up. She kind of saved my part because if if it was just me on there, I would have felt so naked, and I would have. <laughs> I can it. understand. I I. It's funny because like I feel like drummers by nature, like sitting behind the kit a lot mm -hmm. of times, sitting in the back, right? Like there's like a lot of protection, so yeah. to speak. Like, and then and then when you put yourself out there and do something like that, it's a whole different universe. But mm -hmm. um. It worked so well. Your voices together sounded beautiful, and it was it was just nice to hear like a whole other level of JD Beck. Oh no, thank you. Shit, I'm uh, I'm trying to change what people think of me. <laughs> every yeah, day, every day trying to change people from a uh, 14 year old me on YouTube. Oh my gosh, I know, and it is it is tough. Like it it's it's you've come so far in like such a short amount of time. But again, when you're like your whole life is basically documented, um, yeah. your whole musical experience. But I think anyone who has seen 
what you both, you and Domi both have done this year just is 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 blown away by by Thanks. what you're all doing. And um, another thing that, that just like totally took me by surprise was the Tiny Desk concert, oh, the yeah. NPR Tiny Tiny Desk concert. I'm a huge sure. fan of Tiny Desk. And actually, that's where I saw Anderson for the first time mm -hmm. and He's was like amazing. obsessed with his Tiny Desk uh, concert. So mm -hmm. Anyway, seeing you guys on there, I was like, yes, this is so great. And hearing yeah. a little bit of the backstory and stuff too. It's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Tiny Desk was cool. That was that was definitely, I think, the most nervous I've been for like a performance because Tiny Desk is, I don't know, it's like the biggest music performance type thing on YouTube, you know, out of yeah. know, anything. And so, yeah, I just was... I just was worried I was going to screw that one up. <laughs> oh, he didn't. It was really cool. It was really cool. And that was actually the first time we ever sang ever live. Wow. I did not know that. Yeah. My whole family was there because my uncle um, lives in D.C., which is where NPR stuff is. And my aunt flew from Florida. It was just uh, that was, that was scary. That's all. <laughs> I bet it was there's something about like there's something about family being mm -hmm. there, I think, yeah. for those things that yeah. it gives a whole other level of nervousness, I think. Yeah. Where, you know, you're like, oh, there's a whole crowd of people that I don't know and probably mm -hmm. will never see again. It's fine. But then when you are like playing for your family, or even worse, a group of drummers, like oh you know, yeah. That's annoying. I always like, try to like I always every time I know there's a bunch of drummers watching me. I always try to like not be a drummer. You know what I mean? Cuz cuz that's the that's like the biggest problem with drummers, I think, is how drummery we be. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like it, how do you even put that into words? You know, it's you, you see you see like five drummers behind one drummer and then it just becomes this like circle jerk of like how good can we play you know like oh check this fill out check this yeah. you know and yeah. it's well I think it's it is unique to drummers too like you don't see a group of guitarists like descending on a guitar player and yeah. like analyzing yeah. every little thing but we do that as drummers it's mm -hmm. a it's a weird thing and and it's obsessive almost and yeah. you know um I would be like for the for instance the Zildjian live thing mm -hmm. like I think I would be totally uh just terrified <laughs> to yeah. do that and th that's the thing I think it's because drums are the only instrument that barely functions together right like two mm -hmm. drummers playing together only mm -hmm. barely works sometimes like you really it really takes like a special kind of relationship between drummers and also just the music needs it yes. but whereas piano and guitars and even bass everybody can play together because they have they have Another harmony thing. you yeah. know yeah, they have they have the capability of that and so i think with drummers it's very like we, we're kind of animals in a way you know it, it turns that that thing in our brain and it's like it's so competitive and so every time a drummer is you know, playing in front of other drummers, it just becomes like, I'm way better than you, please. Oh, please. No. You know, I can't, no. I can't understand it. <laughs> oh my goodness. And it, and then I think like on the, on the opposite side of that too, like drummers mm -hmm. want each other to succeed, you know, there's that yeah. competition, but like, we also do really want each other to, to succeed and, and yeah. you know, really like mm -hmm do well like you never want to see a drummer just like fall off and and fail <laughs> like it just... well, i mean you'd be surprised some of the well, comments i get people are really no. praying on my downfall oh no no <laughs> but that's fine i think it's great i feel like i feel like if everybody i don't know understood what i was trying to do or you know was just praising me in a way and putting me up on some kind of pedestal or something I, I would be really worried because that's how you know you're not doing something new you know right A anytime anybody did anything new it's always gonna get shit because people either don't see it or they don't like it or they just mm -hmm. don't. I don't know it's yeah it's it's hard to 
hard yeah. to be liked by everybody. I feel like it's it's worse than being hated by everybody. I get what you're saying. I totally yeah. understand. And yeah, you know that you're on the cutting edge of something if there's a group of people who don't get it, right? And it's and and that's okay too. Like it's not for not everything that every artist or musician does is for everybody, I think. Yeah. Right? It's um, all for yourself. That's what it should be. I mean, yeah. when I was younger, I think it, it used to be like, oh my gosh, can Chris Dave see me play this? I want to I want Chris Dave to see me play this cuz you know, yeah. I love Chris Dave. <laughs> And I and then, and then I got older and I started just being like, I just want to like make myself happy. And yeah. of course, that's when I started hanging with Chris Dave, you know, it was when yes, I started yes. to be myself and play for myself. Because he's one of those people too. He he's like he's every drummer's, I don't know. I guess you could say he's like the the guy right now. You know, I yeah. think at least of the last few decades, because where for drums it seems like there's always been like a like a few guys in like each kind of mm -hmm. few decades that really are like doing something new and I think he he's been that guy for a while and I don't know I don't know who else I could put in his category because he's so himself mm -hmm. I think that's I think that's why he's the best I don't know he's he's so good yeah, I, I agree with that. And it's interesting that you like mentioned his name, because if I think of someone who, you know, the first time I saw them play, it blew my mind. And I was like, what am I even watching right now? And I still feel like that. You know, he he played a Montreal drum show. That was the first time I saw him play in person. And it was probably like mid 2000s, uh, yeah. early 2000s, maybe. And he had long hair. He, I don't think he had long hair. Oh, okay. Because that, that era of Chris is really <laughs> crazy. He was yeah, like I think, ruthless. <laughs> yeah. Well, he was ruthless at this, at this yeah, performance too. Hard. And I was just like, I don't know that I've ever heard anything like this. And that fascinates me. And I felt the same way when I saw you play for the first oh, time. When no. And I said that. I was like, this is new. And it's important and, you know, just kind of like bringing that up to people. Um, I remember the, so during that super late or early morning <laughs> rehearsal for yeah. Children Live, I remember sitting next to Paul Francis and I had told him, you have to have a conversation with JD because we need to talk about what he's doing sound wise. Right. Oh yeah. And um, so Paul was there super early in the morning. Yeah, and, I remember. Right? And he is the, Yeah, you remember that conversation and it was funny cuz you started rehearsing, you started playing and Paul stood up out of his chair and he was like, "Why don't I know him? I need to talk to, you know." And it was like this I could That's see cool. the brain, you know, I could see his his mind being blown, yeah. which um I always love to see. But yeah, just that that thought like okay this is new this is oh, different thank you that's that's all i ever want i guess if 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 anybody remembers me for anything i think it's that i want people to know i'm just being myself you know and at least trying to trying to be myself and chris for is sure. one of those one of those examples he like even i mean also there's a few i mean all my favorite drummers are like anti drummers in a way you know which there is best because it's not about the drums it is but it's it's how it's like almost you can't even understand it without the music behind it you know yeah. and that's like yeah. that's the best shit to me I think yes yeah well and it's about the art I think too right mm -hmm. like it's not necessarily about being a drummer but being an artist who plays yeah. drums who sings we more of that in the drum community that's all yeah. I want people. I want people to realize like it's doesn't have to just be like drums like drums yeah. is the shit because that's what that's what that's our instrument yeah but it's, it's about how the drums shape everything around it you know it's not just one thing it's like it's a whole absolutely you know. absolutely and not, and you know i know we've talked a lot about anderson in this podcast but yeah. he he struck me as someone when i saw that tiny desk concert series and i saw him the way that he was rapping the way he was singing while playing mm -hmm. and the phrasing I was like yeah. okay this is totally different and just kind of struck me like that 
Um, but I did want to ask how you got connected, how you two got connected and how that happened, because it, he's he's so prevalent on this album and, you know, directing yeah. the shorts. Oh, yeah. Directing the video. I mean, he's like he's kind of just been our mom the past few years and uh, <laughs> in a I good, you know, and he's. um, Yeah, I don't know. He's just he's one of the few people when we met him, he he really kind of understood what we were trying to do, you know, and I could really tell he did mm -hmm. by the way he was talking. It wasn't just like, I'm here to help. I'm here to yes, do that. yes. And he wasn't like that when we first met. We we got connected because an ex-girlfriend of one of the people in his band, I won't name names, was uh, was at me and Domi's very first show ever together. Like the first time we ever played in public in Dallas at this place, the Freeman Cafe, which is still there. We still play at it. And she was just there randomly. And she she was super drunk and it was kind of funny because after she was kind of like she was like yelling at us but in a good way because she was <laughs> like yeah, my boyfriend plays with Anderson Pack you have to see you have to see the blah blah and we we're like okay sure because we we loved um because that was around a, or a year maybe a year and a half or two years after um that no worries album came out and that was mm -hmm. like that's still one of my favorite albums ever. His knowledge, I've just been like, I don't know, such a, a fan ever since I was like 11 and started deciding I wanted to make beats and stuff. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, shit, this is the this is the guy. And so, yeah, when she brought up his name, I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, sure. Of course. I'd, I'd love to. And uh, I don't know if I even saw his tiny desk at that point or like knew he was a, a drummer, really, because I just knew that album and I knew he mm -hmm. was like was rapping and stuff and so when she told us about that like her boyfriend played with him or whatever and that we had to get in contact and stuff i started really researching and i was like wow yeah this guy is like he's the the real deal you know he's not yeah. just like, an amazing singer and rapper he's like he can really fucking play drums you know in a in a tasteful way and he's not he's not trying to be anybody else too which is really really cool yes and then uh, I guess I guess her boyfriend showed him videos of us on the internet, and so he started like commenting on Instagram and stuff. And then, and then we had to play. Uh, we had to play. Me and Domi were playing for Thundercat in his band for a show in New Orleans on the tour he was on with Anderson. And um, Mac was there too. That's how we met Mac DeMarco. Oh, that, wow. that yeah. whole thing. And so that's we just texted him we're like yo we're playing with thundercat blah 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 and he was like what the fuck i'm right here and then you know we all became friends and stuff it was cool and he's just we've been uh inseparable ever since literally i, I think that. we were i think we were together like every day of 2021 oh my gosh <laughs> a little bit of 20 this year but m more last year we were together like every day it was funny it's amazing. I love that. And, and I, I definitely, you know, kind of see the similarities in the way that you create music. And again, love that you're singing on this album. And, you know, it feels like feels like there are a lot of similarities there. And he you know, uh, let us loose. He was just like, be yourselves. But please, can you sing on this one? You know, he, yes. he's, <laughs> yeah. he's like he, he was the perfect person that could have ever came into our lives because not only does he just believe in us and he just, I don't know, loves us, you know, no matter what. Yeah. I can't think of the words right now. I'm bad, yeah. <laughs> but he, uh, he, he's just unconditionally. That's the word I was thinking. He loves yeah. us unconditionally. And he, um, but he also he never tries to change us, which I think is the biggest problem when people sign to a label. You know, the label knows what works and they try to to mold things into something that that will work for them, you know. Mm -hmm. But he was just more like, I want you to be yourselves and I want you to make every decision yourself and I want you to believe a hundred percent in what you're doing and I want you to you know I don't want you to put anything out that you're not a hundred percent on and that's not you but he was also 
really encouraging and honest in ways that people had never been with us before, you know, like a very, very small group of people. And that then that's basically all the people on our album. It was, I don't know, he, he just, he was honest to us about what he thought, you know, when we would come up with something or do something and he could see through the intention of things, you know, like he would be yeah. like, are you writing this part because you like this part? Or are you writing this part because you think it's cool that people, you know, people will think it's cool or, you know, it's impressive. And, uh, and we were like, yeah, I don't know if I like it as much now that I think about it that way. <laughs> and, and so, and so we would, we would really, I don't know. He, he was, he helped us kind of look in, in a way that we weren't looking in, you know, right. and it, it really made us, it made us more confident in a way too, because when we felt like we had something that was really us, we were like, a thousand percent like ready to you know yeah it. and yeah that's that's why he's the best he, he can. that that is amazing and i think it takes a special person to like pull out the best of someone and help them stay authentic right because that's totally. at the end of the day like the goal there um mm -hmm. and i i feel like that leads into this this um line that the new york times wrote last year uh about you and Domi and the the title was JD Beck and Domi are so young and virtuosic that it feels as if they must be kidding you. Oh. And I was like, wow, you know, like that. that I don't even a, know what that means. <laughs> right? Well, I mean, I read that and I was just like, okay, that really just, um, it speaks to the fact that you are you and Domi and the music that you make together. It's so authentic and you come across as really just doing what you feel right. You're like, you're creating the music that you feel you're not doing it for anyone else. Um, and I, and I think like you said, people, some people are going to get that. And then some, some people are, are not going to get it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, it's for the people that get it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's all I, I just want. I don't know. I, I know deep down that um, my brain isn't special. Y you know what I mean? I think it's like, I think whatever I'm hearing and what I'm, what I want to go through with, you know, what, whether it's the whole album or it's even just like a little, I don't know, video of me playing or, or something like I know there's somebody else out there who no matter what it is that I'm thinking, they're like, oh, yeah, this is this is what I'm thinking, too. You know, because there there's no way that's not that, you know, that's that's why we have fans. I think it's because we've we're at, we are ourselves and there's other people out there who feel the same way about things and hear music sure. the same way. And so as long as I can make those people happy, that's that's all I care about. Cause yeah, I mean I can I can tell when, you know, when it's when we have, you know, people who come to our shows or people who I don't know come up to us after like at the merch booth or something and, and they start talking about, you know, how much they love our stuff and they're like, I literally only listen to you. And I'm like, what the fuck? That's oh. <laughs> the thing. But that that's the thing that that really, uh, yeah, that really keeps me going because I know that they like us because they like what we're hearing in, in our head. You know, it's not it's not like we're, I don't know, coming up with some revolutionary, amazing, brand new kind of sound. I think it's just we're just, I don't know, we're just us. I, I can't. Yeah. Well, I well, OK, so I totally understand what you're saying mm -hmm. there, like you feel like um, what you're doing, other people have thought about or have maybe done in their own way. But I think there's, there is something special about what you do and what Domi does and then how you come together and what you create together. I do think that is unique, but it does resonate with people because the sound is, is so like, it's just so different, you know? So like, Thank you. It, yeah, absolutely. And, and and we have to mention something that just recently happened, which is that you two were nominated for 
a Grammy Award for Best New Artist. Yeah, and Best Contemporary Instrumental Album. You got two. Yes, I mean... I didn't, I didn't think about it. It was crazy. That's insane and and awesome and well-deserved, but, like, insane, right? Yeah, thank you. I think it was an accident. Like, the Best New Artist thing, I was, like, looking at all the other people, and I was like, this, this guy has, like, three million monthly listeners. Like, who, who the fuck are we going up against? This is so weird. And... um I mean, no, actually one of them had like 40 million or something. It was really insane. I was like, these are like pop acts. Like, why are we even associated with that? I get, it's cool nonetheless. I, I guess I, I can't really hate on it at all. I mean, I, I guess I will say it was a little frustrating when I got more um, text messages and a lot more uh, love when I got nominated than I did when our album came out. I got like two texts when our album came out. Oh no! It was like 150. I was like, really? We're caring about the awards more than yeah. the music? But it's so I cool. know. And I think I think people are just, um, you know, the, the scale, like when people think about Grammys or people think about the artists who've won those awards in the past and like you know how cool it is that that that's that you're getting the recognition that you deserve right but yeah yeah but but the album support is very important as well yeah that's what i'm saying i'm like yeah. damn i worked like freaking four years on this thing i know it's a <laughs> I guess, lot i guess that's what the grammy makes me feel good about you know i feel good about the grammys because i'm like okay it was four years of work and at least these you know, like the, the people who are in charge like it, you know, or something. Yes. Yeah. There's something to be said about that for sure. <laughs> um, and like, I mean, I, I didn't know this, but one of the first best new artist awards, I think it only started in the sixties, I'm pretty sure, but like Damn. the Beatles won that award in 65. So like, that's craziness. <laughs> that's yeah. actually so funny. I, I, I can't tell if that's like, an amazing compliment or it just shows how bad music has gotten well, i really, yeah. really can't tell what that means <laughs> you know i think i think it's just it's interesting because like that award always strikes me because in in the other categories it's like your contemporaries right so like mm -hmm. people who are making the same style music as as you are but like the best mm -hmm. new artist award it's always like a real yeah, mix true. you know like a mix yeah. of styles and genres and um, so that that's always it's just fascinating. That's to me. what but I was, me. I'm like, damn, like out of all cool. of this music, you picked us. That's <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I think like you approach that, like you approach everything else. Like, okay, that happened, and now yeah. back to what I do. Right now, back yeah, to yeah. Now back to the fucking the thing back there. Right, recording new music. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I want to I want to hear, too, about all the plans for the future. I just want to touch on one other thing that, like, sticks in my head about our interactions over the years uh -oh. um, and and thinking about your sound and the way that you do things, which is super unique. But mm -hmm. I remember that conversation with Paul and talking to you on other at other points about how you set up your kit and the gear mm -hmm. that you use. And you had the best answer to my question about, like, I think I asked you, like, why do you, and I don't know what it was, like, why did you put the symbol on your drum like this or whatever? And you're just like, oh, yeah. oh I just, like, I, I just wanted the sound. Like, I just thought I needed yeah. the sound and I made the sound. And I was like, yeah, that's totally yeah. the best answer. I mean, things, things can really be that simple. I think most things are that simple. I think we're just, it's hard to put words together correctly to make things you know as simple as it is it's harder to say things and make it sound really easy than it is to you know talk for 10 hours about something like if you if you could say five words and it can mean everything it's like perfect i think that's like that's my goal with everything if it's really simple like perfect yes i agree <laughs> say say it in less words right yeah or just i don't know Say less words when you're figuring it out, and then you'll figure it out easier. I like that. I like <laughs> it. So tell us, you just turned the camera so we could see. Oh, For anyone yeah. listening and not watching, um, we're looking at JD's setup. 
back there. And you were telling me earlier that you're basically just going to get back to making new music, right? Yeah, I think my um, my whole goal, at least now, because next year we have we have so much um, touring, like insane festival dates, like every other week, which is awesome, which is really cool. And uh, so we're going to be busy, <laughs> but yeah. we're, we're kind of setting everything up to where whenever we come back to Dallas and we're like just doing nothing, or at least when we have a break, we can just walk in and, you know, come up with whatever we hear, like instantly. It's like, okay, I have this. Let me sit down and let me press record on the tape machine and fucking, you mm -hmm. know, get ready. Because last, last album was not like that. It was like... We had a setup for like a few months, and the 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 only real setup we had was when we were re-recording things, which was already kind of painful. But for writing, and I mean, most of the album was recorded with an iPhone mic. I'm not even kidding on the drums. It was literally an iPhone placed here, and then another one like on the floor because I didn't have mics. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it just took like months of mixing it and getting it to sound right but actually i will say iphone mics can sound really good if you have like yeah, they can because i would have no idea oh, thank you right <laughs> that's why people always complain they're like why is the album so dry i'm like we had to make it that way because if it wasn't it would you wouldn't be able you to hear know. anything we were playing at all it would be so insane and uh so yeah so we're doing the opposite of that for this album we're gonna have like something nice and we're gonna just be totally free to just do whatever we're thinking of you know or whatever we come up with and uh so yeah that's the goal also i guess i'm gonna try and i don't know we're gonna try and record some more like little videos or covers and stuff for people because people are missing that which is cool it's awesome that that people miss that kind of thing but i've been anti-social media the past like year I'm tired yeah. of it. It's annoying. I hate people yeah. like the Instagram drummer thing. I saw like Fred Armisen was making a joke about like Instagram drummers or something. And it was like everything he was joking about was like stuff on the snare and the beat is really fast. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, oh, no, no. You know what I mean? And so yeah. now I'm like, fuck all that. Even even people like what was his name? Um Who's what's his name? He does the um, the groove instructional books. You know what I'm talking about? Um, yes. Tommy. Tommy. Yep. What's his last name? I forgot. I go. Tommy. I go. Uh, Tommy. I go. Yeah. yeah, he was posting like a some crazy videos, like totally like like shitting on like everything that I felt like was associated with me, and oh, I was no. like, damn. I was like, damn. Is the internet really um, like? the representation of yourself now you know what i mean because yeah you think about you think about like back then how you were saying when everything wasn't just on the internet it's like now because everything is on the internet it's almost like if you didn't post it on the internet it's not it didn't, it happen, didn't happen right, right? Yeah. And for me our entire presence on the internet has been like 10 second snapshots of like little things that were just fucking around with you know it's not supposed yeah. to be this representation of like this is me you know what right. i mean right and i think i think that's what kind of got me like ah, i'm tired of this shit like everybody is associating me with like <laughs> like just this and i think that's why we were so focused on the album for a long time too because we were like okay we can make 45 minutes of music right now that's like this is us it's yeah. not some fucking clip on the internet that other drummers are gonna, you know, make fun of me for. for yeah, <laughs> my, oh, I feel, I feel that, and yeah. I, I'm, I'm sorry that that's like, you know, a thing because, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it just, it's a, it's a little hard to, to deal with, I think, especially, oh, totally. like, mm -hmm. you know, coming up and like establishing yourself as a musician, um, yeah. to have constant exposure and constant like criticism mm -hmm. um i feel lucky that like 
you know, I had established kind of a thick skin before everything went on, you know, sure. social media, because yeah. um, I tell people all the time, like you, you have to just let it totally roll off your back. Mm -hmm. um, but you have yeah. a great mindset about, you know, what it actually means. You know, <laughs> what, what someone says about you, what does that actually mean? Um, yeah. You know, and not that you can just take the positive and let all the negative go and yeah. be like, well, the positive people are right. But, yeah, yeah. right. But you do know that, like, it takes way more effort for someone to compliment you on something. Mm -hmm. It takes thought and care yeah. and all of that. So you can put more weight behind something that comes your way that's positive oh, totally. um, than oh. someone just, you know, spouting off or whatever. They're having a bad day and they want to <laughs> just take it out online. I always yeah. I always think about that. Um, yeah, I, that that shit is funny to me, and I, I guess that's another reason I'm so um, I don't know. I'm trying to find a I, I want to find a way to for people. I just want people to understand, especially kids and people who are on Instagram right now or like the internet thing, and I don't know, are using that as their platform for music. I want them to understand that it's a lot more than just that you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and you can't you can't rely solely on that to to get you where you need to be right I it yes. can definitely helped because I will say if if me and Domi weren't posting our clips on the internet we, we would not be where we are today like that's sure. I literally have to credit everything but just because that got us to where we are today doesn't mean that's all we are you yes. know yeah. And so if everything you're doing is to try to appeal to this social media thing and like who's going to click on their explore page faster for this fucking clickbait drum video. Yeah. That that's that's what makes me nervous is when I see that shit and it's all sure. clickbait and it's all like this is literally just for views. There's no art anymore. It's not about the drums. It's not even about it's not even about like how good you are right because that's that's a lot of shit that people post on social media is like look check this shit out right. you're going crazy which is awesome to watch but it's also like damn like let's let's we really got to make sure this isn't what we're putting everything into you know because yeah, if sure. in five years when instagram is just obsolete and people aren't paying attention to it where are drummers going to be on that scale you know of like popularity or what people sure. are are paying attention to because youtube has helped but everything is on youtube literally mm -hmm. everything and so i think yeah. drummers, as a whole we're more focused on i don't know the art of the drums <laughs> yeah. we'd be in a much better place sorry i'm ranting no no i think i think it's great and i think you know you just continue to do your thing and yeah, be authentic yeah. like like you both are it's just oh, you know that's you. all you have to worry about and and let people just think what they think and post what they post and yeah you know. yeah it's true i just want i want to inspire uh kids to fucking just be themselves too and fucking, yeah that's all i care about is like i just want to see a bunch of um bunch of little weirdos doing shit that i've never seen before like that's all i want to see and yeah uh, and so you are you are inspiring that whole a whole group of oh. people to just do what they want play what they want right make the music that they hear inside of them and dress how they want right just do what you feel like doing. <laughs> it's true i, I dress very strange it's All great good. though. You dress how you want to dress. In fact, I have to ask you too, are you going to attend the Grammys? Yeah. And yeah. do you have your outfit picked yeah. out? Yeah, it's weird. It's like this green, almost like it's almost like silk, but it's not. It's like this crazy green parka and like matching green pants. I don't know. It's kind of funny. Fantastic. I cannot wait to see. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You. you got it. So you, so the Grammys, you're going to attend the Grammys. You've got uh, lots of festival dates lined up. Yeah. More recording. Yeah. A lot of year. recording. And uh, hopefully we'll finish the next record. Um, so it doesn't, uh, I don't know, doesn't take 
four years to put out because <laughs> no was... well now that you've got you know you have the label yeah. you have a lawyer you have yeah. we figured <laughs> it all out i've done it before now so we're yes planning ahead which is good yeah and it's all you know that's that's what it's all about the learning curve right and yeah. you know getting it to the point where next time it's it's not so hard to do and you know um I'm sure everyone else is looking forward to more music too and you know touring supporting this album it's just mm. so fantastic and you know I just want to give you and Domi all the praise you deserve I'm glad that you're seeing that from the Grammys and people and everyone who's buying the album it's so great yeah no, thank you so much it's been um a little overwhelming so I try not to think about it I bet <laughs> I'm, I'm I just yeah. focused on the the next shit <laughs> that's what all next? i'm thinking about. that's all you can do and that's a great way to look at it too you're like okay i did that but what am i doing now what am i yeah doing? i feel like okay. i feel like i suck and i have nothing to show for myself right now so i'm very like <laughs> i'm very <laughs> driven to have something new because i'm like i'm stressed well, that's that's the artist in you, right? You're never you're never gonna rest, and you're never never satisfied. And you know you'll be you'll be seventy years old saying the exact same thing, like, "What's next? What am I doing now?" Well, so. Maybe, maybe. I hope I hope when I'm seventy, I can relax because that would be <laughs> that would be awesome if I could relax when I'm seventy. Because I hope the same thing, JD. I hope <laughs> I hope I can relax at some point too. <laughs> yeah. You will. You will. Oh, well, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you coming on and thank talking you. through everything and, um, you know, inspiring the next generation. That is yeah. what you're doing for sure. Thanks for dealing with me. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> now, it's my pleasure. It's so nice to catch up with you. So nice yeah. to see you. And Great I really to hope to see you in person soon. Hopefully you come through this area or. Yeah, I mean, soon. I mean, probably, I don't know, you'll be at some big thing and i'll be there too probably we'll run into each other happen. always yeah. happen always yeah all of a sudden we're in the same place at the same time yeah all the i time. hope that happens soon it will i can i can all feel right. it <laughs> <laughs> thank you jd good luck on everything that's coming oh, in 2023 you, cannot wait to watch your you know your your journey appreciate you i can't wait to watch the downfall <laughs> No, only only up. We're going. Oh, up. It's okay, okay. Yeah, that's the way it goes. <laughs> All right, I will see you soon. Yeah, bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for tuning in today. Join us each Tuesday for new episodes of Sarah Hagen Backstage.